This is a fun little intarsia project. The girls will like these. You can go out on the internet and you can find these patterns. You'll also want to download the pictures. You'll then notice that unlike most intarsia projects, usually you cut out these shapes, you round over the edges, you use different colors of wood and you glue them together and that's about it. On this one, these little mice and that are three-dimensional. The individual pieces will require a good deal of three-dimensional shaping in order to make these look correct. I use a small round over bit, just ease these edges on both sides. It was originally suggested that I use yellow heart. I couldn't find yellow heart. So for the cheese, I used aspen and used a water-based dye to get the yellow color. And that worked out quite well. The aspen took the color. I gave that like two coats. I rough cut the block for the mice. Then I come back and I do the profile. And I leave this in one piece. I cut the profile all the way around, get the toes, the indentation for the arm or the leg. I cut the mouth and the nose, cut the eye out, cut the eyebrow. These are all cuts done on the scroll saw. And then this has been cut to here, this cut, this cuts back up to here. This one comes all the way up to here. The ear comes down to here and stops. And I make this cut up to here. And that leaves all these pieces together, which gives me the best control on the scroll saw. And you can see the cuts on the back side. I'll go back to the scroll saw and try to keep this as large a piece as possible for as long as possible. I cut the ear off. I'll cut this other ear off, which leaves this piece here to be cut as a small part. This inside part needs to be cut again out of a lighter wood. And that releases the head when I make this cut. And I come back here and I make this shoulder cut. On this guy, I'll peel off this ear. And then when I make this cut around to here, that releases the rest of these pieces. And I have one more cut in here. And I'll have to cut this part a second time because it's, it requires being a lighter wood, which I used aspen for. Then I take all of these pieces for a pair of mice and I put them in a plastic sandwich bag so that I know that those pieces will fit together. And on these parts, write that number on the back side because once you remove that pattern, it's a lot easier to put the pieces together. I've completed this one mouse. You can see all these parts were three quarters of an inch thick. 
This requires being tapered down to a little less than what the cheese is. You're bringing this paw or hand down closer. The head remains about three quarters and it's tapered off into the forehead and down here into the cheeks. This gets rounded over into here. The ear is tapered out. The replacement lighter piece is actually sitting on top of another block of wood to pick it up to the correct thickness. And then this ear gets cut way down because it's off in the distance. That's on the other side of his head. And you want all of this to fit nice and neatly into the profile of the cheese. And from this angle, you get a better idea of how much these wood pieces need to be tapered and rounded to get down to the final shape. We use an aggressive carbide tool to round over the corners and remove the majority of the material and come back with progressively finer tools and smooth this out and make the contour look as natural as possible. I use a variety of different tools in my Dremel flex shaft, coarse carbide, sanding or grinding drum, smoother carbide, different shapes, and the sandpaper drums, these don't last very long, whereas the carbide, as long as you keep them out of glue and paint and stuff like that, they tend to last forever. And I have another tool that's more aggressive. This is pretty handy in some areas. It removes a lot of material. It will on occasion grab and jump on you. You gotta make sure you keep your finger out of the way or it'll remove part of your finger as well. I have a couple of other cutters you have to be even more careful with. These have these little spikes sticking out of them and they can do you a lot of damage. When I'm grinding on this, this drum is, is turning in that direction. It's throwing stuff back at me. So I'm wearing a dust mask. I have safety glasses on. I'm just taking light cuts with this and it's throwing material back at me. I'm over a wastebasket. The large majority of the material will fall into the wastebasket. I just keep taking light cuts, working at this very slowly and trying to keep your fingers and your fingernails out of the way. When you're grinding on this, grind from a solid surface out to the edge so that you're easing into the wood grain. When you're coming into a place that has relatively thin, delicate sections, you want to grind from out here out to the edge. If you come over here and you grind into the edge of that foot, your grinding material will latch into that wood grain. You'll be breaking pieces off and you can spoil one of your parts. Just take light cuts, especially in these delicate areas, very light cuts, and ease the contour into what you're trying to accomplish. When you put one of these tools into your router or into your flexible shaft, don't push it all the way in. Leave it out a little bit and tighten it. That'll make it a lot easier to remove that tool later. Loosen that collet or loosen this, this chuck and then push on it and then it'll come out. And that's true with uh, your router bits as well. Leave yourself a little bit of room to be able to push down on that collet so it will release the tool. I still need to come in and replace this inside part of the ear with a lighter color wood drop it down a little bit and lower the ear on the other side so it's closer to the cheese. You'll need to make a backer board. And the function of the backer board gets glued onto the back of the cheese and it's cut a little bit smaller. You have cutouts here so you can see through the cheese and not see the backer board. And it supports the different pieces of the mice as they get glued to the project. I usually start with the head. You get these three pieces together and make sure everything fits the contour as I glue the head on. There's a little bit of glue that goes between the pieces and to the backer board and to the cheese. And then the next piece, and then the ears are added last. 
after you get everything shaped, which includes the ear inserts for the two mice and the tails, I cut these tails thick so I have something to hold on to. I can bring the Dremel tool in here and shape these edges. And I put it on the disc sander and I sand it to the final thickness. And the same way with this one. Only this one has to jump up and that to clear the foot and come back down to the cheese. When you're all done, I put linseed oil on this. It really makes the color of the wood stand out nice. And I put a hanger on the back. This was aspen that was dyed yellow. The mice are beech. The insert for the ears is aspen. And the tail on both mice is hard maple. I think having eyes in these little guys is optional. I didn't feel like making them out of wood. So take some long straight pins, get the biggest head possible. And I stick that down inside the eye until it hits the backer board. And I mark how long it is with my needle nose. I bend it over. Then I bend it around. And cut that off. Chew it up with a pair of pliers. Magic marker. And I take and put about two drops of carpenter's glue down in there. And I set that down in there and let it dry. And that's how I made the eyes. Once you make one of these and learn how to shape the parts, then making additional ones is quite a bit faster.